Sooner Nation, we are here to talk today about some interesting news that's coming out of spring practices and how Oklahoma might have turned around a specific position room. And I think this is a room that has had quite a few questions going into the 2024 inaugural SEC season. And today I just kind of want to talk about it and talk about some of the early returns that we're seeing out of this room and what we might see going into the season because I think it's important. And before we do it, guys, I want you all to join the discussion and kind of give me your thoughts around these players in the tight end room and what your initial reactions have been out of spring because I think we've heard a lot about it. But the guy that we've heard so much about in spring practices and a guy that has stood out is Bauer Sharp. This is a bit of guy that Jackson Arnold has been able to find, get the ball to. And I think it's shocked quite a few people on how good he has been since he's gotten here and maybe even the weapon that he's going to be this season. Here's why. Because he transferred from a small college, southeastern Louisiana, and last year only had 29 receptions for 288 yards for three touchdowns. And if you remember when he hit the transfer portal, we talked about him being a sneaky good grab for Oklahoma because this was a guy that when he hit the portal, he heard from Alabama, Penn State, Colorado, SMU, Oregon State, Louisville. He even had official visits set up for Utah and Tennessee. And here's the deal. This was not the Alabama with Kalen DeBoer. This is the Alabama with Nick Saban. So obviously that staff and Nick Saban saw something there. Penn State has decent tight ends. And then you look at Utah and who Kyle Whittingham uses the tight end position very well out there. And then Tennessee where you've got an offensive minded head coach. He knows what he's looking for. Bauer Sharp was a guy that I think a lot of people just kind of missed on expectations because well, he's from a smaller college. He wasn't the flashy, you know, name out of the portal or even off the recruiting trail. Here's the deal, though. Bauer Sharp being able to get this connection with Jackson Arnold this spring and what we're hearing, I think, is super important because the tight end position in the SEC is an extremely important position in the offense. Look at Georgia and Auburn and Alabama and all these schools that have utilized the tight end position very well. It's important to be successful. And, I mean, Georgia's just a different breed when it comes to tight ends. Here's the deal, though. It's not just Bauer Sharp, though, that's gaining buzz. I mean, you're hearing stuff about Josh Fanuel, who, if a lot of you guys are familiar with Josh, he was here last year. Uh, I believe he got a couple runs, but Josh Fanuel is a guy that, sophomore out of Missouri City, Texas, I'm not sure if he is still a PWO or if he's on scholarship at this point. But you've got a tight end room that I think, how do I word this? Like, it's got a lot of, like, potential depth. We just haven't seen a lot, right? So I think looking at what we're getting in the spring from some of these tight ends and understanding, oh, so this tight end room really now has great potential. Let's see how it goes and translates to the field in the spring game throughout fall camp and maybe even into the season. It's going to be interesting to see how Jeff, or um, not Jeff Levy, uh, Seth Luttrell and Joe John Finley really want to utilize these tight ends because you've got a guy like Jake Roberts, who I imagine is going to be used in a lot more of like run schemes and Bauer Sharp's probably going to be used in a lot more of the passing schemes. That's just kind of how they are. Additionally, I'm really curious to see how they use Bauer Sharp as a weapon when it comes to like H back tight end, kind of that flex role. Like I would say similar to what we've seen like Jeremiah Hall run. I think even Braden Willis ran it a little bit when he was here in his final year at Oklahoma. That's what I'm curious to watch because Bauer Sharp was a former quarterback that switched over to tight end. Got it right. Kind of like Blake Bell. Again, hope some of you guys are jumping in the comments and getting that right. So the question is, if you got a guy that, I mean, let's be honest, Bauer Sharp playing quarterback, could you run a package where you're putting Bauer Sharp next to Jackson Arnold, right? You got a tight end like, let's say, Josh Fanuel or Caden Helms and then Jake Roberts. So you're running a two tight end set, but really you're running three because you got one next to Jackson Arnold. And now a defense has to be ready because are you running Bauer Sharp as a belldozer package? Because I definitely don't think that's out of the question. 
Or are you running Bauer Sharp as a guy where, hey, you can dunk it to him in the backfield? I think a lot of this is going to be pretty interesting to see how Oklahoma utilizes it. Additionally, Caden Helms. This is a guy that four-star out of high school, number 311th ranked player out of Bellevue, Nebraska, 6'5", 222 pounds. Listen, he's got all of the ability to be a high producing tight end, like to be a really high productive guy at the next level. And I think for Caden Helms, like you're hearing, Oh, he's healthy. Then you see the pictures and the videos of him, which by the way, if you guys have not go to, um, George Stoya and I think it's Eddie. I think they've posted a couple pictures of, and videos of Caden Helms on their Twitter. Um, you might even be able to, they might have it on their YouTube. Uh, you guys will have to go check it out there. But Caden Helms looks massive. And if this dude is healthy by fall ball and he's practicing at full capacity, I would imagine we're going to see Caden Helms on the field in a pretty, I feel like, significant role. That's how athletic and that's how I think dominant Caden Helms can be. Like he is a guy that when he steps out there, you have to respect it. And here's the other thing he's 6'5. And we talked about this when we landed Zion Kearney, and I really think it's kind of gone by the wayside. You have guys like Jaden Gibson, Nick Anderson, Zion Kearney, uh, Ivan Carrion. All of these guys are taller wide receivers. If you can run a package where you can have a tall tight end, like at 6'5", or you can have a, and then Ivan Carrion and Nick Anderson and Jaden Gibson or any of those guys and run a tall package, at some point or another, it's going to be harder for the teams to be able to match up with you. Like they might have one guy that can cover a really tall receiver. They're not going to have multiple guys that can do that. So at some point or another, Oklahoma is going to become a pure mismatch for opponents on the field. And that, that's something that I'm also curious to see. Like, do we see packages like that where Oklahoma can use their height to their advantage and really try to take advantage of small corners, small safeties, even small linebackers. I think that's going to be really important. So really loving what we're hearing out of spring practices with the tight end position around Bauer Sharp, Caden Helms, Josh Fanul, really any of these guys. I mean, one tight end we haven't even talked about is Devon Mitchell. Like this was a five-star in the 25 class, reclassified the 24, lost his fifth star. But I mean, you heard about how dominant this guy was and how physically gifted he is. And although I don't think he is going to get a ton of snap, like I'd be surprised if Devon Mitchell just was like a tight end two or three. Like I think he's probably at best a third or fourth option if Caden Helms is healthy. I think you get him in this year, you get him physically there, right, with the weight and the strength and get him just a year at a college program to understand the playbook and understand how, like, you want to run your offense in the SEC and see these defenses. Then next year, Devon Mitchell is going to be an absolute stud, not to mention with whatever Oklahoma is going to bring in in the 25 cycle at tight end. But that's a video for another day because that's getting really just, um, yeah, we got to do some more stuff. But really want to hear from y'all. So make sure you're joining the discussion. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are about Bauer Sharp really standing out as one of the best tight ends in this room for Oklahoma. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that like and hit that subscribe button.